Today we're talking about Lebanon as a country looks to try and recover from a devastating port blast last month. Talks to try and form a new government have stalled despite a Paris deadline. Where does the country go next? Joining us to discuss all this is Lebanese MP and politician Mr. Fouad Makzumi. Ms. Makzumi, thank you so much for joining us at RFI English. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so Mr. Megzumi, it's uh, mid-September and Lebanon still doesn't have a government despite a two-week deadline imposed by France. What's holding these talks back? President Macron came with a very clear idea that I would like to help you. Unfortunately, the Lebanese people, because they have learned how to play the masqueraded party, mm -hmm. they smiled, they agreed, they did everything, but then all of a sudden, we mm -hmm. see they're back to their old routine. Okay. I want this number of ministers mm -hmm. because, you see, since 2016, to be frank, Hezbollah created a situation whereby he was not sure that he can be in control of the government because at every prime minister since 2005 mm -hmm. was appointed by Hezbollah or approved by Hezbollah. Okay. Every minister, every general, every judge, so that we don't kid ourselves. Okay. Hezbollah is in control of the government. Okay. That add to it the fact that they have their own arms, okay, which okay. is way stronger than the army. Okay. The fact is Hezbollah runs the country. So is, okay. is Hezbollah a problem? Well, more than that. But Hezbollah realized that you know he does not want to be the front line in taking decision. So he created this partnership. Okay. So, but he sold us, sold the Lebanese people the story that, you know, if we can have a strong Sunni with more numbers of member of the parliament, then he mm -hmm. should be the prime minister. Okay. And the same thing we do with the Shiites and the same thing we do with the Maronites. Mm -hmm. So they created the election law of 2018 okay. that basically he has helped to fix the election to make sure that Hariri gets the biggest number of votes on the Sunnis, the same thing with Nabi Berri on the Shia, the same thing with Jumlat on Druze, and the same thing with Gibran Basir on behalf of the Maronites. So when this thing happened, then they said, let's go on. Who has protected Hezbollah all these years? Are these allies of Hezbollah, the Sunni, the Druze, the Shiite, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But really the one that promoted the current statu quo Mm -hmm. are the Sunnis. Because, you see, after the 2005 agreement between uh, Bir, uh, between Hezbollah and Michel Aoun, mm -hmm. the, the Christians were not received internationally as that they used to be in the past. Okay. The Shiites, they have very limited exposure. Mm -hmm. So really, the real people that were traveling the world and selling Lebanon were the Sunnis, which has been the prime minister. Okay. Right. So when I see the four prime ministers that they existed from 2005 up to now are promoting this deal that's going to be there, it's getting me worried mm -hmm. that there is no sincerity in okay. trying to go along with okay. the uh, proposal of the initiative of Mr. Macron. President, so, uh, just to kind of, President Michel Aoun has called for, perhaps for a secular state uh, in Lebanon to try and move a country away from its uh, sectarian-based system. Is, is a secular state possible? To start with, the when we went to Taif in 89, and we, you know, it was incorporated in our constitution in 92, it says very clearly, mm -hmm. we should work on trying to eliminate the sectarian divide when it comes to the the parliament elections mm -hmm. and all of this. But all of them, they are liars because they have been telling us this since 1992, but they have no intentions because mm -hmm. without that system, they cannot win. Okay. Without that division that they have in order to make sure to get the Shias to hate the Sunnis, the Sunnis to hate the Druze and so on and so forth, they can never be there. Okay. So what they have done, they created the small club of leaders of the sectarian groups, okay. whereby they say, if you're a Sunni, you have to go to Hariri. If you're a Shiite, you have to go to Hezbollah. If you are a Maronite, you have to go to this. This is was fine when we did not know that we were bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Because you see, like everywhere else in the world, any population mm -hmm. that can has a roof over their head, they, mm -hmm. they can educate their children, they can feed their children, normally politics comes secondary. Yes. But when you start realizing that this group stole our money, because of their corruption, because of their negligence, people are saying, hold on, this does not work anymore. And this was the importance of the 17th of October. Now, can the initiative of President Macron, we wish and we hope and we're willing to give him all the support to the prime minister designate if he is willing to go through reforms to the parliament? That will be our role to help him to go through it. But to implement reforms, you need a government and Lebanon still doesn't have one. Uh, what needs to happen to get a cabinet formed quickly? Well, based on the position of of uh, of uh, the the Shiites today, I think they they think that time is on their side, and they think because President Macron has put deadlines, mm -hmm. and if they say no, maybe they can improve their conditions of negotiations as time gets to the last eleventh hour. Mm -hmm. I hope this will not be the case. We believe Mr. Macron is very genuine about his demands. If he can push this 
forward, I think there could be a chance. But are you, do you tell me that I trust this political class? The answer is no. So where does that leave Lebanon now going forward? Um, you know, since October last year, we've seen protests uh, on the streets of Beirut from the Lebanese people demanding change, demanding an end to government corruption. Uh, in your view, what will, what will it take to dismantle this system? As far as we're concerned, we need to do an international investigation for what happened in the port of Beirut. I don't trust the judicial system in Lebanon. Once we do that, there will be a lot of big names that are going to be exposed, mm -hmm. which basically are they have to be put on trial. So if we are going to be doing the forensic audit, not on the central bank, as Mr. Macron said, on the central bank, on the banks that took the people's money illegally, because according to our law, they have no right to invest our deposits without our knowledge. They have the right to invest their equity, but mm -hmm. not our deposits. Mm -hmm. And now the deposits are gone. Third, we need to investigate the political class that took the money from the central bank and abused it. Okay. If we do all of this and we can convince the American to speed up the process of putting these names out mm -hmm. that are on the OFAC, you know, yes. sanctions list, then people are going to say, why do I need to go with this leader mm -hmm. that has put the whole country into this? Okay. That's when we can start the change, even at the current law. Mm -hmm. we can basically make the change. With, with all due respect, Mr. Makzumi, your own name has been uh, cited in allegations of corruption in the past. Uh, in 2017, you were notably uh, accused of, uh, of paying former French Prime Minister François Fillon uh, 45,000 euros to benefit from his address book. And some people would say that uh, this undermines your authority in, in, in talking about the fight against corruption. How would you respond to that? Uh, the corruption we're talking about is corruption in Lebanon. I don't have any investments in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. I never had any income from Lebanon. Mm -hmm. Whether I do, the question of the, the, the agreement with Mr. Fillon mm -hmm. was a consultancy agreement which was legal. Okay. It is in his book. Now, whether he reported or not, it's not my, my business to decide. You, mm -hmm. you have a consultancy company. You come to me and you say, I would like to help you. It's a legal company. I sign a contract with you. Now, it is up to you mm -hmm. to see if what you're doing is basically you're authorized to do or not, not me. Okay? Okay. It was a business to business. Okay. Now, but this was done in Europe, in France, and it was public. Mm -hmm. So yes. it wasn't anything hidden. Now, how it will be played by the media, I don't know. But it was public and it was recorded in our books. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing called a payment because it was a contract. To get to Lebanon precisely, uh, France's role in the recovery. You've talked a lot, talk, talked a lot about uh, the importance of President Macron. He was the uh, first foreign leader to come to Beirut to visit uh, the country after the only the, foreign, the leader. Only foreign minister, uh, foreign um, leader. But since then, I think the Italian um, Prime Minister um, Giuseppe Conte has also visited the country. Uh, some people have said that you know Macron, uh, you know, has a lot of uh, respect. He has a lot of credibility in trying to help the country. His critics, though, say that he's trying to almost reconquer uh, France's former colony. Um, how do you how, how do you view uh, Macron's role? President Macron really wants to help. Whether he has a political agenda or not, this is normal. France is a superpower. Mm -hmm. France has Mediterranean interest. France has interest with the oil and gas exploration that's happening in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. They have good relationship with Israel. They have good relationship. You know, they had previous relation with Syria. Then the war in Syria started. Mm -hmm. The whole thing turned around. But all the time, France has been trying to engage Iran in a way to try to balance the powers in the region, especially with Russia and Turkey. Mm -hmm. As far as Lebanon will fit within that overall plan that President, President Macron has. But I still genuinely believe he has affinity for the Lebanon. And we should try to capitalize because really it's the only initiative which is there on the table today. What pressure can he put on the Lebanese uh, leaders to, to act and form a, a government quickly? Uh, Tuesday is the end of a, of a deadline uh, and my, we still don't have a, a clear cabinet. Um. My, my suggestion to Mr. Macron, work with the Americans, get the Americans to start announcing this list of the OFAC people that we put under, uh, under uh, sanctions. sanctions. Make sure that Europe will go along with those names because that's the only way you will scare the hell out of them to make sure that they understand that the international community has no more interest to play. Mm -hmm. And once we do that, then you can start forming, reform, you know, forcing reforms. We need to start with the reforms. Mm -hmm. If we do not have reforms, we should not invest a single penny into the country. Let the people revolt against this political class. Okay. If we do not change this political class, all the money that are planned to be spent will be water under the bridge mm -hmm. and nothing is going to be fixed. So I hope that he will not compromise on his list of demands that he has there. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure 
to do that. The, the, the Secretary of State, Pompeo, just announced that he believes the, the arms of Hezbollah is undermining the Lebanon and all of this. Uh, France is saying, let's keep that aside for the time being. Mm -hmm. I think the Americans and the French have to work hand in hand because I think with the pressure that the, the, the Americans can put on the region mm -hmm. and on Lebanon and the diplomacy of France, I think we might have a good chance mm -hmm. that we can really build on that initiative and to move towards a better Lebanon. Today we've, we've been talking about Lebanon's recovery and France's role uh, in this process. Uh, I've been speaking today to Mr. Fouad Makzoumi. Uh, he's a politician, the president of the National Dialogue party in Lebanon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mixumi, for your time and thank you to you all for watching. Stay tuned to rfienglish.com for more news and analysis.